I really struggle listening to world leaders when it comes to climate change and what governments and consumers should do. And with COP28, it just blows my mind that the Pope is lecturing the world on climate change. It boggles my mind. It boggles my mind. This is what the Pope had to say just yesterday, actually. Pope pleads with global leaders to find breakthrough on climate change. And what's interesting about this, uh, Francis says it's, necess it's necessary to move decidedly ahead with green, uh, greater energy efficiency and the elimination of fossil fuels. While he couldn't attend COP28 due to health matters, uh, Francis said it was necessary to move decidedly ahead with gre greater energy efficiency, renewable energy, the elimination of fossil fuels. In his words, the climate run amok is crying out to us to halt this illusion of omnipotence. Let us once more recognize our limits with humility and courage as the sole path to a life of authentic fulfillment. Now, I give the Pope credit. Those are very noble words, but there's this tinge of lecturing that I sense specifically towards the middle class. This is what the Pope had to say just a few months ago, or sorry, back in October. Francis says that our irresponsible Western lifestyle pushes the world to the breaking point on climate. Okay, so Pope Francis says here that he warned the technology alone won't solve the climate crisis, and it's only getting worse. Technological advances that make it possible to absorb carbon capture gas emissions are proving promising. We risk remaining trapping, trapped in the mindset of pasting, pasting and papering over, oh, pasting, huh. Pasting and papering over cracks. To suppose that all problems in the future will be able to be solved by new technical interventions is a form of homicidal pragmatism, like pushing a snowball down a hill. Okay, very interesting words from Pope Francis. But the condemnation of our lifestyle comes through loud and clear. And I just can't help but hear the hypocrisy because... And I, I, I don't know Francis's, Pope Francis's lifestyle. I don't know all the ins and outs, because a lot of it's not publicly available. But I'm going to assume that Pope Francis lives pretty humbly and doesn't, you know, engage in this Western lifestyle that he's accusing, I feel like, myself and others of. But I'm going to assume that he lives, lives pretty humbly. But there's the Vatican City investments and the vatican invests all types of ways with that kind of money now it's really hard to kind of like suss out where their investments are going this is what greenpeace reported back in 2016 revealed vatican bank officials tied to fossil fuels so sir michael hints which was i don't know if sir michael hints is still a vatican bank board member but is the chief executive of Cayman Island-based private hedge fund CQS Cayman. Holds $8.3 million worth of stocks in energy companies, $1.7 million in fracking giant Devon Energy, and Anadarko Petroleum. Hintz was also the chief executive of CQS Rig Finance, which constructs and maintains oil and gas rigs, as well as other equipment used by the oil and gas industry. And that's not just Greenpeace. I mean, from what we're able to see... Um, Vatican spent over a year examining Angolan oil investment. Vatican's powerful central administration office spent more than a year researching a $200 million investment into an Angolan oil company in a deal proposed by a personal contract contact of a senior cardinal, raising fresh questions about the oversight of funds administered by the Catholic Church. Now, listen, I, I, listen, I totally get human nature, right? You get a bunch of board members together to administer a fund that has billions of dollars, you have to show a return. And of course, oil and gas is a relatively blue chippy kind of investment over the long term. So it makes sense. Now, I know over the past few years, the Vatican has openly said that it's trying to divest from fossil fuels. But if you ever try to find the Vatican's finances broken down into specifically what it invests in, you won't be able to find anything. There's actually nothing online about the Vatican's individual finances. And I think that's for a very good reason, because they can be held to an, a higher level of accountability. So I don't know. It just, I find it very rich that Pope Francis 
in a way is making not myself but others feel guilty for this western lifestyle when i think one of the greatest powers the pope has is shedding light on the investments of the vatican city or the vatican bank i don't know i just i i feel like there's a lot of hypocrisy here it's like they're driving the car and they see it going you know over the cliff and then they turn around and blame the passenger in the back seat for what the heck is going on it's like you're driving the car you're driving the car and you're contributing to oil and gas and greenhouse gas emissions in such disproportional numbers that to you know an average family you know to be honest the real concerns families have today and people are just cost of living you know I really do think that inflation and interest rates are the biggest attack on poor people than anything else governments do. And maybe that's my own bias, right? Maybe it is. But I, I just often wonder how much power these world leaders have if they were to actually discuss inflation, interest rates, and some global call to, to really work hard at bringing these down because of the impact it's having on poor people. And that is one of the Pope's biggest aims, is to stand up for poor people. And I was having this conversation just the other day with a friend of mine, and, you know, here in Toronto, rents are going up, and they're going up quite dramatically year over year. Last year in Toronto, it was 11% uh, year over year. And I just think if you're on a fixed income, or if you're making minimum wage or close to minimum wage, how can you possibly afford living in these cities? And not just Toronto, but American cities, G7 cities writ large. Like, it is next to impossible. And I just often wonder, the biggest thing that countries can do for the poor would be to take some global action on reducing inflation and interest rates because that is the single biggest... Um, policy that is in my opinion attacking the poor like that is perpetually attacking the poor if your dollar is worth less and if in interest rates keep rising yeah that crowds out a lot of investors of course but think about the poor in the communities in your country whose cost of living just went up 30 40 percent and their wages have stayed flat and they were already struggling before so, I don't know. I just find it so hypocritical. And I hate to, I'm not calling the Pope hypocritical necessarily, but I just find the sentiment hypocritical when these big issues in the world are happening. And I feel like a lot of world leaders are turning their blind eye to that and the impact their words can have in really lowering inflation and interest rates to really help the poor. That's my rant for today. Let me know what you think. Do you think the Pope is right? And do you think that? Uh, world leaders have a a hill to stand on or a podium to stand on or whatever the saying is to lecture the rest of us about CO2 emissions. I find that odd. Let me know in the comment section below.